Yo, 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 what's going on? What's going on? It's your boy Teach. You know what I'm saying? Back with another video. Um, man, got some got some good information for y'all today, man. This is a must see, man. This is probably gonna be a two part series. And I need y'all to stay with me, especially for the second part, man. The second part is gonna take us home. You know what I'm saying? So um, you know. Uh just give all thanks and praise to the most high man for this day, man. It's uh it's a beautiful Sunday morning. Couldn't really sleep last night. Um, uh, out there with the fam. Yesterday we had a homecoming, so you know we just uh oh man the community was out there. Everybody looking good, man. Uh, at the food, you know what I'm saying. Just uh just a real good time. But uh yeah, man. Listen, that's why I say on the last video, y'all, it's imperial, man, that we do our own research. You know what I'm saying. We dig, we dig, and we look with the right perspectives, man. Because I'm telling you, I'm telling you, man, the things to be uncovered. You know, it's crazy, man, because these folks really been lying. They've been misinterpreting things and mistranslating stuff like that, you know what I'm saying? So you really just want to kind of dig on your own and do some of your own research. So without further ado, man, I'm going to start this video off uh, with a with a comment I had in the left on the Brother 43 to drop on um, video. You know, the video he did about those of the Kachi Quails, he was reading them in the Popo Boy. If y'all ain't seen that series, go check it out. You know what I'm saying? But he was reading them. And the Mayans was talking about this red stick that they had. You know what I'm saying? How they um how they stuck it in the ground, you know, and all that. And so uh, I'ma read I'ma read the actual annals of the Kachi Quills for for you. This is the uh 432 the drop radio, his library, man. He got a good library for y'all, man, with these documents, man. I'm so it's a blessing, man, what these brothers be doing. But check this side, it says, so we're gonna start up here at the top. It says, computer acting slow, y'all. I gotta bear with me. Ever since I've been trying to bring out this information, now they've been, you know what I'm saying? The computer back is slow. You know what they got going on. <laughs> but nah, for real, check this out. It says, then we arrived at the seacoast. There were gathered together the warriors of all the seven villages at the sea. A great number perished, devoured by sorrow. There is no means of passing, nor is it told of any one who has passed the sea all the warriors of the seven villages uh, said all the warriors of the seven villages excuse me who can who will find means to pass the sea in thee alone my brother in thee alone have we hope talking to this 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 priest that's leading them you know what i'm saying because these stories man that these minds wrote you know and these they got a lot of biblical narratives you know what i'm saying they, they correlate to a lot of biblical you know, especially this is like an Exodus story. You know what I'm saying? So check this out. They say, um, we said to them, you may go on. You may be first. Uh, who will find the means of crossing while we are here? All of us spoke thus and said, then uh, all of them said, have pity on us, our brother, since we are all stretched out on the shore of the ocean without seeing our hills and plains. Without seeing our hills and plains. Remember, because these people got a land contract. To a certain land area, so they trying to get back to their land area. You know what I'm saying? Their land, their land inheritance, their plains and uh hills and mountains. You know what I'm saying? So it says, as soon as we were asleep, we were conquered. We the two oldest sons, we the chiefs and gods of the warriors of the seven villages. Oh my brother, um, would that we had passed and could see the burdens given to us by our mothers and fathers. Oh my brother, so they spoke. At that time, the Quiche Nation had increased. Our ancestors, Gagavit and Zaktua, uh, said, we said to them, we suffer also, our brother. We do not live stretched out on the shore of the ocean where we cannot see our mountains where they are. Where we cannot see our mountains where they are. As you say, O oh, you warriors, you people of the seven villages, we shall pass over at once. Thus we spoke, and soon all of them rejoiced. Now check this out. This is where it get real. It says, Now there was a red tree, our staff, which we had taken in passing the gate of Toulon, and therefore we call the and therefore we are called the Kachi Quail people. So they called the Kachi Quail people for, for this red staff, this red tree they they they, they carry. Um, our son, oh our son, said Gagavitz and Zaptua, the root of this our staff was pushed into the sand of the sea, and soon the sea was separated from the sand, 
and for this the red tree served, which we brought from Toulon. Um, soon the sand was a line, and we passed out, and it became wide above the sea and below the sea. Then all rejoiced, when they saw the sand in the sea, and many consulted together. There indeed is our hope. We must gather together on the first land, they said. Here only, here only can we arrange ourselves since leaving to line. Here only, you know what I'm saying, in their, in their hills and plains and mountains can they establish themselves because that is their inheritance. That's their land. So here only can, you know what I'm saying, they be established truly as a nation or the nation that they are meant to be. You feel what I'm saying? So, so when I heard them read that, you know what I'm saying, I was just, I, the first thing that clicked in my mind was Baton Rouge. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, and that's what I, and that's what I commented. You know what I'm saying? Take it to the comments. You know, yeah, okay, hold on. Yeah, so here's, here's the comments I had left on the video. And it says, doesn't the name of Baton Rouge of Louisiana mean red stick? Because when the French arrived to that spot, they found a red stick stuck in the ground by the natives as a landmark. He was like, LOL, yes, sir, bro, you got to drop for real. Let me know if you have rocks on that. I was like, bro, I'm going to do some digging, and if I find anything, I'm going to hit your email. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, bro. So, you know what I'm saying? That, and that's when I went on the hunt. Red stick, this red stab, this red tree, which is the red cedar, the juniper, the juniperus, uh, Virginiana, something like that. Um, This man, this cedar tree, oh, my God. <laughs> Man, all praise to the Most High. It's something about this tree because with with the knowledge of this tree, I was able to uncover a lot of stuff. I was able to, you know, um, come across some very interesting perspectives. You know what I'm saying? And also, the brother Arthur Scott Jr. Well, he had not commented down here. Kind of helped me out too. He was like the Choctaw migra migration story says the same thing about the brothers one having the magic stick. So. Let's go over here real quick. Alright, so Baton Rouge. Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Shouts out to the boot. You know, I saw my brother Mapano down there. You know. They say uh Baton Rouge, French for red stick. It's the capital of um the US state. So hold on, let me uh let me bring you down to something else. Okay, so we just scrolled down a little, a little bit to the colonial period. Um, and this is what it says. It says, uh, see further information on Louisiana. French explorer, Sierre, um, Pierre de, uh, Birdsville led an exploration party up the Mississippi River in 1699. The explorer saw a red pole marking the boundary between Homa and Bayou, Bayouguela. Now, Homa, I'm going to tell you, Homa is where you like Oklahoma. Homa literally means red. It means like red people. Oklahoma literally means red people. You know what I'm saying? So, I don't know. You know, it's like you got to exit this story uh, and to see, you know, you got a red pole. Um, then you got these red people, almost like Edomites, you know what I'm saying, after crossing the sea. But, you know, that's that's a whole nother, um perspective, you know, we're just gonna keep it rocking and formulate and you know, theory rise like the book four four three two drop say. We just um you know what I'm saying, we just digging man, just seeing what we can uncover. So we say the French name uh Le Baton Rouge, the red stick is trans is a is the translation of a native native term rendered as Istromna, possibly a corruption of the Choctaw. Choctaw. Now keep that in mind. I keep these tribes in mind you you know what I'm saying? Certain things you're gonna wanna um maybe even write down or, or, or keep in mind because we're gonna we're gonna be touching on them uh throughout this video. Uh a possibly a corruption of the Choctaw Iti Hum Humma, red pole. You know what I'm saying? So this this is a quote from, from um uh explorer when he published uh the first link account of the expedition in seventeen twenty three. So according to Pentecost call it or whatever. From there, we went five leagues higher and found very high banks called escorts in that region and in Savage called Estromna. 
which means red stick, uh, Baton Rouge. At this place, there is a post painted red that the savages have sought there to mark the landline between two nations, namely the um, the Bay Gualas, uh which they were leaving the land and, and the land of another nation. 30 leagues upstream from Baton Rouge named the Ormus, the Homer, the red people. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, you got this red stick right here that's, uh, that's, that's stuck there when, you know, in Baton Rouge when they came. You know what I'm saying? Now keep that in mind. It's very important. They say it's stuck there for hunting grounds or, or land markers. You know, that's, that's the two, uh, things they give us. But, you know, um, just to give you some, uh, information, you can check out these two these two uh right here the red sticks um or or also called the upper creek of the muskogean confederation um these people are called red sticks because of the red sticks they carry for medicinal purposes uh you know spiritual purposes war you know what i'm saying war clubs and just for whatever man this red cedar tree man is, is a very useful and, and sacred um tree unto the natives people so y'all can dig on that right there i'm not really gonna click on those links but if the creek, you know, when I was looking, when I was studying, the creek, um, they kind of didn't take me nowhere. They did, but what I'm gonna be focusing mainly is 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 more of the Choctaw in this um in this particular video. So we gonna um we gonna go back and remember um what the Kachiquel was saying. These people came from Toulon. You know, they 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 had their red tree in their staffs at Toulon. They left Toulon. And came to um they left Toulon and came to their hills and their valleys which is the Guatemalan Mayan you know Yucatan region um of Mesoamerica now so I, I was looking you know I did some digging I wanted to see what what what, the, what Toulon was and if I could find any location for it or anything so you know here's the um here's the wiki page of Toulon it says Toulon Toulon or Tolan is the name used for the capital cities of the two empires of the pre-Columbian Mesoamerican. The first for Tehuacan and later for the Toltec capital Tula, both in Mexico. The name has also been applied to the post-classic Mexican um, settlement Cholu, Cholula. The name Tolan means among the reeds in the Nahuatl language. Now, that right there was like a, a, a double win because I'm like, hold on. I remember Aztlan, which is the um the ancestral homeland of Aztecs, also being referred to as the place of reeds. And, you know, and then we all know that the Aztec are a Nahuatl people. You see what I'm saying? So it, the language of this word right here even has the Aztecian origin. So I'm thinking like, you know, it's two lines. It's two line and 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 Aslan the same thing. So you know, I was doing a little bit more more digging, came across this document right here. It says two line and the other. So I'm gonna scroll through this, give y'all some quick drop, cause this right here is a long document and it go in. You know what I'm saying? So I'm gonna scroll down a little bit and try to um try to see if I can find what I want. All right, check it out. So remember, the document was called two line. Um. The Toulon across the sea, right? Because these people said they came from across the sea. You know, all right. So check this out. It says, uh, all the major uh, colonial quiche and sources, the Papa Bull, a Memorial de Sol Solola, the Tatula de Totonicapan, and several others are quite uh, consistent in relating the quiche nation, quiche nations, or more, or more precisely, the mythological founder. Mythological founding of fathers originated somewhere across the sea. And we should take relevant passages. The Pope of Bull states that repeatedly states repeatedly that um progenitors of Balam Keats Aquits, Balam Ahab, uh Mahuat, Kuta, uh Ikwa, Balam came from Chaakwa 
Palo across the sea where the sun emerges. Now, keep that in mind because you even got some biblical account. I'm not really going to touch on it here because I um I really haven't um too much made those correlations yet. But I know there's some biblical accounts like what Moses was telling them, um, you know, across the Jordan where the setting of the sun or somewhere coming from the rising of the sun. You know what I'm saying? I know y'all probably not heard about that. But um, but so we're going to keep it moving. Because I'm going to tell you, the translations vary. In some, in some places they say where the sun, they came from where the sun rises. In certain places they say they came from where the sun um, sets. So, you know what I'm saying? You really got to kind of, you know, do a little deciphering or whatnot. So it says, where the sun emerges, that is, from the east. Uh, let's go some little cliche and it said this thus was the disappearance and end of Balaam Keats, Balaam Makwa. Uh, um, they were the first people who came from across the sea where the sun emerges. Anciently they came here. They died in their old age. Those who were called blood letters and sacrificers. Uh, they were sacrificed, you know. So saying earlier in the in the text, it describes how the first mothers and fathers and thus humankind were created in Paxil, Kayala, and how these people multiplied there where the sun emerges. Um, before they decided to leave the place and move to a mountain named Tulan uh, Suwa or Zuva, you know what I'm saying, uh, seven caves or seven canyons to obtain their God. While the Pope of Bull first clearly distinguishes the East as one location in Tulan, Suyu, Wakwa, Uku, Siwan, as another passage, a later passage refers to both places as a point of departure. So, um... Equally, the, tol the Titula de Totan Nikopan merges um, Paxil and Tulan as a place of origin. The Parisio uh, Terrenal, um, Siwan, Siwan, Tulan. The text describes that the leaders were of the Wakwab, look at that, Wakwab, Amak. Seven nations. Sound like Jacob. Yaqua, Yaqua. Um, the wild people with great capacities who arrive. Uh, Chaqua, Chau, Chaqua, Palo, across the lake, across the sea from Tulan It says, we, and when they remembered their their arrival, they were in the wild people. Far away arrived their vision in the sky and the earth. Uh, there was nothing equal to what they had seen all below the sky. They were great knowers. They were leaders of all seven nations of Nic of uh, Tecpan. Like this was their arrival across the lake, across the sea, from Talan Siwan. So that's just a little bit of the across the sea information for you. But we're going to drop down a little bit right here. Uh, this is what we want. It says the um the the Kachikwil narrative is quite gloomy. Um, remember the Kachikwil, the people with the red sticks. It say it's quite gloomy, describing the forefathers' departure from Tulan, accompanied by negative omen and the pa parasanging of death and dismay. This account of crossing the sea bears some similarity to the description of Tuluto, Titulo di Totanikapan. And that the Kachikwe progenitors, Gaga Wits and Saktikal, part the sea by the help of the red staff they bought with them from Tulan, which they derived their names. See Memorial. Gotta go up a little bit. These the name de It says the Memorial de Solala specifically specifies that the people traveling from Toulon came uh, from four directions and that there were four Toulons, one in the east, one in the west, one called uh, Shibalba, um, the other one called 
which is the abode of Kabawud. It says Azagawitz and Saktakal said it was four locations where the people came from Tulan. One in the east is one, um, another one in Shababa, and another one there in the west. The one where come from is the west. The one where we come from is the west. Another one is in Kabawa. The memorial de Salata differs from the other sources, but mainly the Pope of Bull in that uh, relates that the Kachikwe progenitors came from Tulan across the sea from where the sun descends the west. See what I'm saying? See how it kind of differs east, west, sunrise, sun descend. It says from the west we came from Tulan across the sea where there is Tulan where we uh, were born and in engendered by our mothers and our fathers okay so you know a little bit more drop on the i'm gonna I'm read it because i think it's gonna get into a, a little bit of some biblical things now it says historia de los whatever the name is <laughs> fuses the locations with quad Siwan, seven caves seven canyons you know what i'm saying um and it came to lan azib to lan Southern Tulan, writers Tulan, and the one single of. Uh, and that document specifies the place of origin as Nagagi Palo, center mist of the sea. We shall come back uh, to this further below. Let me see that a little bit of. Um, it say in some sources, the biblical account of, uh -oh, um, of origin is conflated with biblical concepts which has given rise to assumptions that the entire myth of the origin of creation from the sources has been influenced by Christianity ideology. Not that these people, they just, you know, not that these people can be descendants of Israel themselves and they got the documents and the history and they know it. No, it's just that they had to be, you know, influenced by uh, Christian ideology. Even though some of these things were written for, you know, Clemson and Cain. But anyways, it says uh, in this way, the historia de Don Juan de Torres includes the biblical concept of Babylon in this description. From there we came, from the east, across the lake, across the sea. Um, when they left, hold on one second, y'all. Let, let me take this phone. All right, we back. My bad, my bad. It say from there they came, from the east, across the lake, across the sea. When they left. There as well, it is named Babylon. Interesting. They came from Babylon. Hmm? We all know, man. You got the Babylonian, Assyrian, uh, Persian Empire was like three kingdoms in the same empire almost. You know what I'm saying? So, I don't know. And then when you think about the seven Ks, you know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't really know. You know, this is up for speculation. But, you know, uh, in reference to seven Ks and Babylon, you know in Revelations they talk about Babylon sitting on seven waters, if I'm not mistaken, seven mountains. Um, so you know, I don't know if that's a possible correlation. We don't know. But um let me see if there's anything else in here I want to get. Okay, a little more down in this document. All right here I just want to sh uh show you this again, more confirmation on it meaning. Um it says the, the original meaning of Talon in the face of cattail reeds. Place of cattail reeds. Um, so let's go down a little bit. Oh, I might have passed it. Hold on. All right, so check this out. Up here at the top, the Aztec sources. Uh oh, hold on. Move that out the way. But it says the Aztec sources describe the place of origin of humanity and mankind generally in the mountain with network of caves named Chicamotzuk Seven Caves. Remember, we we're just talking about Seven Caves of Two Line. They basically hold the same story. So I'll jump down a little bit. It says. Right here, this is the second paragraph. 
They say, we may, however, wonder whether the migration, migration tale from the Guatemalan sources might indeed be an instance of mytholo mythological borrowing. In the Aztec tradition, the legendary place of departure is Aztlan. The concept of Aztlan resembles that of Tulan or Tulan uh, Zavu in the Popa Vuh. We have pointed out that the Popa Vuh makes a clear distinction between the place of human creation, um, you know what I'm saying, Su U U uh, Suwan and Tulan Wuh, as the place of departure. The fact that the pattern is identical with the term Tulan clearly being etymologically Nahuatl, it may first sight seem plausible that we are dealing with a borrowed concept and that um, Central Mexico is the is the origin of the migration migration myth. Um, and the sources of from the Aztec tradition, Tolan is a concept as mythological and intricate as in the Guatemalan Guatemalan sources, the paradise like place of creation with abundance. I mean and abundance. Remember that word because it comes up a little bit. Um, where power and uh legitimacy are bestowed and as a place of allegedly historical episodes. So, so dig on that, you know what I'm saying? Um so basically from once you do the research on these two places you kinda see that uh Aslan and Tolan are the same. You know what I'm saying? Remember, Tolan is the Marjorie's. You know what I'm saying? So, I, like I say, um, let me take y'all back. Okay, right here it says Aslan. Is the legendary ancestral home of the Aztec peoples, Azteca, Nahuatl for people from Aztlan. Okay, so hopefully you guys have a little bit of background information on on that. So, uh oh, here we go. Chickamosa, the place of the seven Ks. Um, let me go to etymology real quick. Okay, so the meaning of the name Aztlan is uncertain. One suggests meaning is the place of herons or the place of egress. So remember this now, the place of herons and the place of egress, the explanation given in to whatever. But this is not the possible this is not possible under Nahuatl morphology. Place of egress would be Atzatlan. And um other proposed um der der derivations derivations include place of whiteness now we got three different um definitions for the um the place at land or Tulan you know what I'm saying the, the their origin we got three different places of what it means it, it means the place of egrets um or the place of herons place of egrets place of herons um place of reeds in place of whiteness. Now remember them three. Write them three, especially because in this in this first part we're gonna tackle herons and egrets. But in the second part, the place of whiteness is gonna come in. Y'all gonna need to definitely catch that. So just remember that. So um now check this out. This is uh this is some site on some Book of Mormon stuff. I ain't really too much on that, but um it do got a couple of things I want to display. So you see right here is uh, Tulan, and it says Tulan means bountiful. Remember that bountiful and abundant. But um, what I really want, I'm gonna take it down here to the voice. I'm gonna just get a little, a little bit of this. It must have been difficult for them to leave Tulan. This choice area is described as abundance and bountiful. So it means abundance and bountiful, and launch out into the unknown. The ancient historians among the Maya Quiche wrote. That the people wept in their chance because of their departure from Tulan, their hearts mourn when they left. Uh, the Mayas say that the ancients also called the West um, Landing Site in the New World Tulan. The Maya Cachiquel historians of Guatemala wrote, From the West we came to Tulan from across the sea, um, and it was at Tulan where we arrived. Uh, so check this out. 
in 1950 Milton R. Hunter and Thomas Stewart Ferguson pointed out that some ancient minor Ryan said that their ancestors came from Toulon, Bountiful, near Babylonia, <clears throat> and that they landed in the Americas at Toulon. You know what I'm saying? But we're we, we going to see about that. But check that out, though. Uh, near Babylonia, and they landed in the Americas at Toulon, and the Lord, and the Lord supplied the Gurgon Gagal directly the colony across the sea. Because they were sons of Abraham and Jacob. You know what I'm saying? So, looking at these Mayans and these Aztecs, you know what I'm saying? It's really the northern kingdom. And where they were dispersed after um, Assyrian captivity is what we're trying to, what we're trying to dig into. So, now that we basically kind of got that understanding, we're going to kind of dig into a little bit more sources on some um, translations of the names. Okay, so this right here is the website for the new theme park that they 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 about to build, um, called Aslan, Return to Aslan, and this right here is uh, Aslan Development, uh, where, uh, what is the story behind the Aslan theme park? So these just give you a little research on Aslan, the theme, you know, what I'm saying the people, you know, and all that stuff like that. So I want to get right here to this. Little flash they got, and I'm gonna jump right here. It says Atlan means home of the snowy egrets or the place of whiteness. The snowy egrets and white, remember that you got them egrets, them herons, them reeds, and whiteness. The place of whiteness, the snowy egrets, or the white herons are a frequent symbol of the Aztecs. Now we go down a little bit more. Gonna give you some information on the Aztecs, but check this out. The documentary In Search of Aslan confirms this information and more through a series of interviews. One of the interviews is uh is of Dr. Carlos Velez Abanis, who states um the Codis Boturini basically lays out the trick from the place of Hera and Reed. Which is what, which is really what Aslan basically means. Place of herons and reeds. Okay, so it's more confirmation on the definitions. Okay, so like I said, we're gonna tackle the two definitions: um, the reeds and the egret, egrets and the herons. So this is this is an egret right here. This egret looks like. You know what I'm saying? So it also hit me because, okay, you got the red stick in Louisiana. And when I was looking at Louisiana, I came across this right Louisiana. You know what I'm saying? It's like a egret, but they say it's a pelican. You know, you know, Louisiana got stupid egrets and herons. And, you know, even look at this. But, you know, that's just a little, a little, well, let me go back. Um, but yeah, so just so you know what the egrets look like. Now I'm gonna take you to uh, a, the Wikipedia page of reeds. What a reed is. A reed is a common name for several tall grass-like plants of wetland. So reeds basically is the grass of wetland. So when you're looking for a place of reeds, what you're looking for? A place of wetlands, right? And coexistently, the egrets live in the wetlands. You see what I'm saying? They they are they're in the areas where the reeds are at. And you'll see that too as well as we um continue to go along. Okay, so this is another article I came across. Um it says more evidence of a Maya presence in Georgia. Now, listen, there is a interview about an hour long about um uh, uh archaeologists. Uh, the interview is called like Mayans in Georgia, but you got to check that out, man, because it's some good information. Uh, the dude tell you how like through his work, he's seen people implant um, archaeological um, findings and artifacts in places that they did not come from. He watched it just to disprove the Mayan presidents in some of these sites. So, uh, you know, but check out that this is just a little, this is just a little article right here. Um. But uh, check out, check this out. Okay, so he say, um, 
I'm going to start by right channel. It said, I had previously studied Creek Indian migration. Remember the creek, the upper creek, they call red sticks as well. Um, migration le legends to try and determine where they had originated. Most of their legends suggest an origin in the West, and my research traced them back to possibly West Mexico. Yet one Creek Indian tribe had a completely different migration legend. The Hitchity Creek migration legend placed them in the Lake Okeechobee area after having arrived on the Florida coast from a place of reeds. Now, in that in that um interview, I was just telling you about mine is in Georgia. The dude, you know, he, he claims to be um Creek. It sounds, I mean, he's probably a Caucasian. You know, the Caucasians really tend to gravitate to any little piece of culture that they have and, and you know claim it. Um. But I mean, you know, we all trying to find ourselves. So, but uh, he states, you know, that Creek, the Itzate Creek, have very an abundant amount of correlations with the Itzamaya. You know what I'm saying? So, dig on that. He said, in the Mayan language, place of reeds is a metaphor for a large city. Thus, we have a legend that the place that places a southeastern tribe at the scene of the crime arriving by boat from a place of reeds. A known Mayan euf euphemism for a city. Again, the evidence suggests a Mayan origin. If the Hichiti were in fact related to the Mayan, there should be some linguistic evidence. I found one such connection on my first try. I knew uh, one Mayan phrase off the top of my head. Chichen Itza. It's a great Mayan city in the Yucatan that the Chichen, I know that Chichen meant mouth of the well. And, uh, Mayan with chi meaning mouth and chin meaning well. I consulted a Chitty English dictionary and to my amazement discovered that chi also meant mouth and in Hichiti and and chani meant well. Thus chichani meant mouth of the well in Hichiti. Look at that. I wouldn't I would later go on to find many more similarities. So that's just that. So again, we got this place of reeds. You know what I'm saying? We got this place of reeds right here with these people um, dating their origins and, and, and where they come from. Quick, because I forgot to do this. I want to give y'all um, just a little glimpse. This is what they say Axe Land is right here. Right? This little southwestern area. But because right here now, what people got to remember too, the Mississippi River starts is actually in Louisiana. You know what I'm saying? So when when you get Mississippian, don't just think you know Mississippi. Of course, you know you got the whole um you know southeastern um Midwest area being the Mississippian mound or cultures, you know places of dwelling. But at the same time, remember we got the stick right here in Louisiana. You know, we're looking for reeds, we're looking for wetlands, places of water, such and such. Um, let me see, what something else I wanted to grab for y'all. Oh, right here, I got this little side up for you. Let me see. Louisiana top 10 wetlands. Hold on, let me blow. Okay, so you got the Louisiana top lands. You see these wetlands right here coming up from the Mississippi River. Um, I, now, I'm going to tell you, it's, it's kind of funny, because remember how the Mayans, they talking about crossing this sea, and it kind of sounds like, you know, them living in captivity, and it sounds like the Moses story. But, you know, I also heard some people refer to the Red Sea. It was actually called the Reed Sea, you know what I'm saying? So, and, right, you know, just a little perspective, something to look at. You got Louisiana right here with the, with its wetlands, its, its reed land. Right next to uh Gulf of Mexico, you know what I'm saying reeds all around it. So you know, you got you got Israelites crossing the Gulf of Mexico. So um you know the Achafalaya basin. That's one of the richest, you know what I'm saying basins in 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 the, in the country. So all right. So now we back to that um that four three two. Because uh, I want to show the comment right here, Arthur Scott. 
I don't know if I showed it, but if I didn't, hold on. The Choctaw migration story says the same thing about the two brothers. One had a brother. Drop this comment, you know what I'm saying? That gave me an interesting perspective too to go check out the Choctaw. Because like I said, the creeks was actually called, the upper creeks who were built against the um, Europeans were called Red Stick. But when I was digging in the creek, I couldn't really find too many things. I ended up finding some afterwards. But you know, like I said, that's probably going to be for another video. But um, I want to check out these Choctaw real quick, man, because um. These Choctaw Indians are going to take. Okay. So, um. Alright. So, Choctaw mythology is related to Choctaw, the Native American tribe originally from southeastern United States, Mississippi, Alabama, and Louisiana. Um. Let's see. Choctaw creation. So, okay, we got the Choctaw, the first version. Choctaw who remained in Mississippi tell this story as an explanation of how they came to the land where they live now and of Naniwahia Mound came to be. Two brothers, Chata and Chiksa, led the original people from a land in the far west that has ceased to prosper. The people travel for a long time, guided by a magic pole. Each night, when the people stood, stopped to camp, the pole was placed in the ground, and in the morning, the people would travel in the direction in which the pole leaned. After traveling for an extremely long time, they finally came to a place uh, where the pole remained upright. In this place, they laid to rest the bones of their ancestors, which they carried and buffalo sacks from the original land in the west. Uh, the mound grew out of that great burial. After the burial, the brothers discovered that the land could not support all the people. Chicksaw took half the people in the part of north and eventually became the Chicksaw tribe. Chata and the others remain near the mound and are known as the Chata. So that's just a Wikipedia version of the Choctaw creation story. We're going to get some more than that, but as we can see, we got these people talking about the same. Um, Magic poles, the same red cedar sticks. You know what I'm saying? We're going to see if we can get some more on that. Remember, we're talking about the Choctaw tribe, not the Choctaw of Louisiana. Keep that in mind. All right, diving a little bit more on the um, Choctaw and Chickasaw um, origin, migrational story. Um, as you can see here, the Chickasaw migration story, journey from the place of the setting sun. Um, let's see if we can uh, see scroll down. goodness all right so scroll down a little bit it says right here the Chicksaw migration story tells us that before the Choctaw and Chicksaw were two different tribes there were one entity led by two brothers Choctaw and Chicksaw now I remember in the uh, Annals of the Kachi Quill there was the two the two uh, chiefs that was leading the Mayans you had Gagawitz and Zatua so I'm just going to keep going. After experiencing many years of war with the powerful enemy, two brothers decided it was time to travel to different lands and have peace once again. The tribe was then split in two groups, uh, each led by one of the brothers. Chata and Chicksaw uh, led their people from the direction of the setting of the sun, of the direction of the setting sun. The brothers brought along a divine long pole, the Kota Falea. And each night they would place the pole in the in the ground. Upon walking in the morning, Chata and Chicksaw would look at the which way it was leaning, and in that direct and and that would be the direction they travel on the day. If the pole in the ground was standing straight up and not leaning, then that was the place where they were supposed to settle and uh, found their new homeland. For weeks, months, and years they journeyed, and yet the pole was found leaning east every morning indicating their journey was not complete. One morning they awoke. You know, this is almost like a, a showing of signs. You know what I'm saying? So just, just keep that in mind too. One morning they awoke and the pole was swinging back and forth, They they which never happened before. Uh, when the swinging stopped, the two brothers could not agree on its position. Chata believed it was standing straight and, um, and that they had found their new home. Chicksaw did not agree. 
that the pole was standing straight and felt as though the journey should continue. The brothers eventually came to the conclusion that Chata and his followers would remain in the area while Chiksa and his followers would continue the direction where he believed the pole was leaning. Chiksa continued until it stood again, and from then the followers of Chata were known as Chata, and the followers of Chiksa were known as Chiksa. Uh, after uh, leading the Chiksa farther eastward, uh, to present-day Alabama and Georgia, the cult of Philea, um reversed its direction and guided the people westward to a place in the vicinity of present-day towns of Pontotop, uh, Tupelo, Mississippi, less than 100 miles north of where the Ch uh, Choctaw settled. Uh, the sacred long pole stood as an arrow. The Chickasaw people had had to do with certainty that they had found their uh, new homeland and that their journey was at an end. These new ancient Chicksaw homelands would eventually be scattered across the forest mountains. Check it out. Scattered across the forests, mountains, and prairies of the lands that later became known part of western Kentucky uh, and Tennessee, northern Mississippi, Alabama. Major waterways such as Mississippi, Tombigbee, and Tennessee rivers off, offer not only a source of food and water, but provided opportunities for trade and transportation um in the region as well so you know and um this is another article you know i'm just kind of validate validate the story you see chicksaw uh choctaw and chicksaw origins um say the choctaw chicksaw begins one tribe um they had the cotafalia the long pole you know what I'm saying? So now understand this. So the Chicksaw and the Choctaw, right? The Choctaw stayed where the where the poles were standing straight. The Chicksaw left. Now the Choctaw were known for uh major the majority of them populated in the areas of Louisiana, right? Now we got the red, the stick standing up in Louisiana and Baton Rouge literally means red stick because they seen the stick standing up. So, Louisiana, that part right there of the Mississippi River, is where they came and found their new homeland after they left from where they was coming from. Now, the Mayans could have crossed right there at um at Louisiana because I'm going to show you something. Check this out. Okay, so check out this right here. This is the Gulf of Mexico, right? Now, as we say, so the Choctaw coming from this ancestral place, right, um, wherever they was at, and the Maya, you know, in Chickasaw, they coming from this place, okay, they get to the Mississippi River, bam, we got a pole in Louisiana, right, they stay. Another tribe said they didn't agree with the place and they kept going. Now, the Maya say that they, they came to the shore of the sea and they crossed into their hills and valleys, their lands. Now, their lands is the Guatemala Yucatan region, Belize, you know what I'm saying, all that right there. So, could it be that once the tribes got in this Louisiana Mississippi River area, that they crossed here, bam, where they could see their mountains, their hills and their valleys, you see what I'm saying, right in this Guatemala region? You know, so that's why I was kind of looking at it and it was taking me there, so I'm looking at it like, dang. So, I'm like, okay, so. As I'm looking in Mississippi, uh, the Louisiana, Mississippi River, you know, that area, I'm looking uh, for these red cedar poles. I'm looking for these red sticks, you know what I'm saying? And um, and I end up finding them on, like, in a place called uh, Poverty Point, Louisiana, where the, where the uh, mounds are. So I'm looking at these mounds, and then I start seeing red cedar sticks in, like, all the mounds, like, you know, a lot of, not I'm not going to say all the mounds, but mostly your mound civilizations, you man, they were dealing with these red cedar sticks. You know what I'm saying? that, And that's what brought me to um, the Hokey. I got a little video. I got some video clips for y'all, so stay tuned. Okay, so um, so like I was saying, that's when that brought me to Cahokia. 
and I was doing some research and I came across this this guy's page uh C F C F A P P S something like that. Oh man, the dude he goes in, he does extensive research on ancient sites and even uh comparing them to certain ancient documents, biblical narratives and certain things like that. So um it's definitely something to check out. Uh I'll show you what his name is once I once I zoom out. But you know, as slow as my computer is, let's hope this thing will show us what we need to see. on Egypt or Peru or pyramids in Mexico or Mesoamerica and often what is overlooked and I am guilty of that also is right here in the middle of the United States yeah I gotta begin and I know Don't a lot of you have heard of this this is called Cahokia Mound Status hold on real quick Okay, the quality was on HD, so I turned it down to about like 480p. Let's see if that happens out. I thrived about 1400 to 1000 years ago. And there are numerous mounds scattered throughout the site here. And what this site is most famous for. Is, is I'm going to zoom in here a little, maybe kind of a bird's eye view of this, but this. what this site is, what most, this famous site is most famous for is Monk's Mound. Monk's Mound, and here it is right here. here, it is right here. And this is not and a mound, this what this is is an actually, is an actually an ancient, an ancient earthwork, pyramid. earthwork pyramid. Let me try it's something. Big. It's big. Alright, let me zoom out a little bit. Um Okay, that's the dude's page right there. But uh I'm gonna try to play it um not in not in full screen because it tends to go a little bit slower when I do that. So. The great Pyramid of Giza. Just, just slightly, slightly larger. larger. It's bigger than the Pyramid of Mexico at Teotihuacan. But the true history of this place has been overlooked, ignored, and actually suppressed. I will go into a little bit of that, but I just want to give you some history, the standard model history of Cahokia, and I want to give you some of my own thoughts on it. And I'm going to jump around from website to website. At least below, this is an artist rendition of what Cahokia looked like when it was thriving about a thousand years ago. The red cedar pose in the middle. Mound here in the back, and that's what he thinks it looks like. Red cedar pose. But I'm just going to read a little bit of you know what I'm saying. Accepted history of Cahokia. It says Cahokia Mound. Cahokia. It says Cahokia Mound. Alright, I'm going back again. That's the that's his uh, YouTube page right there if y'all wanna check him out. It does great research. So we finna get into this place right here called Woodhenge. This is a circle of red cedar poles. So hopefully it's a place for us. Earth and this is a very important feature of Cahokia, I believe. And what was discovered here are ancient post holes and formed a perfect circle. I don't know if you can see that very well. I will show you a better picture of it here. But this is what Woodhenge looks like when it was reconstructed. And it was definitely a celestial observatory of some site, of some sort. And going back to Google Earth. This is this the view of Monk's Mound in the distance, and this, this pole right here, I believe, right was, here, a I marker, was a marker, and it was a very important and marker, very important because, because if you were at Cahokia today, today, and you were down, and you were down at this at center this pole, center pole, looking out, looking out towards Monk's Mound, towards Monk's Mound. 
you would see the sunrise, you would see the sunrise on the spring equinox on the spring directly, equinox, rising, directly rising over Monk's Mound. Over Monk's and Mount. that just relates and it that just relates to some very uh, important very ancient sites ancient that sites recognize the spring equinox the spring in their equinox uh, building their, structures. Uh, building but here, structures. this is what it looks here, like today. Looks like today. The, the sun on the spring the equinox, on the, spring the day equinox, signifying the resurrection. Day signifying resurrection rising directly over rising Monk's directly Mound, over Monk's and that is viewed from, and that is viewed called Woodham at Cahokia, that is very important. That is very important. Very important. So people that have done so some really good research on Cahokia definitely classify classify these people that uh, built these original that structures on worshippers. Hmm. And people such as uh, Wayne Herschel have done some studies on Woodhenge, and they he also says that they were tracking Orion across the sky, and that fits with a lot of ancient, a lot of other ancient sites also. And I will leave that link below. Also, and I will leave that link below. And this is another artist's rendition of Cahokia. And what do we know about Cahokia? Well, first news and research of this ancient site uh, that got back to Washington, D.C. was kind of suppressed. The Indian Removal Act had just been put into place, and Washington, D.C. and the U.S. government was much more interested in suppressing the great history of Native American people instead of glor glorifying it. So it was kind of swept under the rug. We know the city pretty much the accepted dates of it uh, really thriving are between 700 and 1200 AD, or current era, and that coincides with the drought that severely affected the Mayan and Aztec cultures in Mexico around 700 uh, current era, and it's not unreasonable to think some of them migrated north and contributed to the building and the population of Cahokia. There are other things that connected to Mexico and the Mayans and the Aztecs, Monk's Mound is said to be a four-tiered earthen pyramid, and I just can't help think the pyramid of the moon at Teotihuacan is a four-tiered pyramid. There was human sacrifices done at Cahokia, and the same thing was done in uh, Mexico about 600 years ago, and that's well chronicled by Graham Hancock and his war gods. What led to the demise of Cahokia? Well, there's evidence of a great flood here, and I don't think this is a biblical flood. I think this is just a common occurrence on the uh, uh, river, Mississippi River Valley. There are great floods that happen all the time. Um, I believe the most recent ones were 1965 and 1993, but it seems it uh, kind of wiped out a lot of the history of Cahokia, and there is also evidence of uh, huge ancient fires, and it's not really clear if this is done uh, through warfare or just rebuilding projects, but uh, also the layout of Cahokia has been compared to Tikal, the Mayan ruins in Tikal, and I will try to leave as many links below as I can, and I just want to show you some of the artifacts. They found in Cahokia, and they certainly look Aztec or Mayan, or could be related to them. We also have turtle shells found throughout the site and on Monk's Mound, and this is a symbol carved into this uh, rock, this circular rock, and the trident, and this is supposed to be a turtle, the trident on the left symbolizes death, the sun symbol on the right symbolizes life and rebirth, and some people have equated Monk's Mound. They think this is a giant turtle effigy with half, and that has to do with creation of the Mayan myth and also many Native American tribes. And you can see how they might think this is a turtle with the turtle's head being here. That makes Very sense. important. Uh, what we have here is an ancient site that it seems many cultures uh, built around the ruins. A great uh, metropolis was built around this giant pyramid. We have a circular observatory that tracks the sun, marks the day of the spring equinox, the day of resurrection. Okay, three, well, two to three things from this video. One, um, look at this place. You know what I'm saying? Beautiful place. But you got to, you know, your red cedar sticks, man, everywhere. They they help build, you know, these structures with these with this cedar. Um, also, uh, you know, the, the wood hinge uh, part. 
right here you see this video right here Cahokia City of the Sun you can click on this video and like it'll you know they'll be telling you about the abundant and bountiful lands of Cahokia um they'll also tell you like when he first started coming on the Indian chief who was chief supreme you know of, of who lived at, at the top of these you know what I'm saying mound he comes off basically like starting the the Ten Commandments, you know what I'm saying, like saying them to the people as ways to live by. I remember when the children of Israel, when they left Assyria in captivity, they aspired, you know what I'm saying, to do the things of their forefathers which they had not done in their land, you know what I'm saying. So that's just one one little interesting perspective. But I, I got another video clip for y'all. Okay, so uh, we got this video called the Mound Builders, man. This video got some good information. And uh, y'all, again, man, forgive me for my computer, man. It's acting real slow. But, uh, you know, saying through the, uh, the grace and mercy of the Most High, we still gonna get it in. Bear with me, bear with me, y'all. Choctaw Indians, now remember that. Hold on, man, this this is this is going too slow. Still acknowledge the beliefs of their ancestors by performing. Hold on, y'all. Oh, right, y'all, bear with me. We're gonna try again. We gotta get this in. So, just bear with y'all. The pause the video, go check the video out for yourself, man. Go do that. Acknowledge the beliefs of their ancestors. By performing this ancient spiral snake dance at sunrise. Ancient spiral snake dance at sunrise. Rising sun along. Now remember, they at Cahokia. You see the red see the posters, the red hinges. Remember the Choctaw landmarks on the site. The post Choctaw Indian migration. On the summer solstice, the longest day of the year, the sun rises in line with the year. The sun rises on the mound. Hey, hey, you hear them calling? Bob Hall, himself part Native American, is an anthropologist. I told you, man, these folks want to be Native American. Who was one of the first excavators of the Woodhenge? I feel that uh, these posts are. The center pole is especially fascinated me because the center pole uh, uh, there was an association with mourning that it was in connection with the mortuary ceremonies. There were in connection with the rituals in which the renewal rituals in which of the earth was combined with the resurrection of the dead person. The earth was combined with the resurrection of the dead person. Yet Native American tribes still trace their heritage to Cahokia. Joe Watkins is from the heritage. All right, listen, y'all. Listen to what this man is saying. Which has its geographical roots in the Mississippi Valley. 
Mississippi Valley. Listen to what this Choctaw, supposedly Choctaw person, is about to say. Choctaw, quite a few southeastern Indians believe that. Choctaw, quite a few southeastern Indians believe. Oh, here could have been the Grand Homeland. You heard that? Listen. The place from where we all came before we were differentiated. Place from where we all came. Tribes. You hear that? I know my computer tripping, but y'all gotta go get that. The way the Palestinians view the Holy Land. That it's where we the way the Palestinians view the Holy Land, that it's where we started, where our genesis began. Started where our genesis began. Yeah. Okay, so you heard what, what he just said, you know what I'm saying? Now that's a Choctaw, someone who's been around the Choctaw natives is supposedly of the tribe, and he said that Cahokia is believed by the Choctaw elders. You know what I'm saying? To be the ancestral homeland where they all came from. You see what I'm saying? Um, he, I don't know. It's, as you've seen in, in, in the beginning of the video, you know what I'm saying? You had the Choctaw uh, circling, um, dancing around the, the wood hen stage that's at Cahokia. Remember, this tribe is, is now in present day Louisiana. You know, but they got those, those origins up there in Cahokia. You know what I'm saying? Or in the Mound, Mississippian Valley um, culture region. So, bear with me. Okay, you bet. Uh, this is another part of the video I want to try to get in here, see if we can get in here. Some other parts, but the way the um, video acting, might not be able to get those. Like I say, man, come back and check out this video, Descendants of the Mound Builders. For hundreds of years, science scientists refused to believe that these great earthworks could have been built. These great earthworks could have been built. They attributed the mound to Viking explorers, to the lost tribes of Israel. To the who? To the lost tribes of Israel. To the what? Even to the notion that our country had once been. Even to the notion that our country had once been. Populated by a race of Superman. All right, how you But yeah, you know what I'm saying. Just wanted to wanted to show y'all that. Um, get that in there, man. It's some it's some couple of things, man. They gonna show you like some black Indians. You know what I'm saying? A, a photo like around. I don't know. You you watch the video, man. You will see it's a it's a it's a it's a picture that they gonna show you of these these. Indians dancing around the poles, but the Indians got like afros, woolly hair, look like they got beards, you know what I'm saying? Singing Negro spiritual, you feel what I'm saying? So, I don't know, man, y'all check that out. But, um, I got one more little clip for y'all, we're gonna see if we can get in. Okay, yeah, so this is another uh, video clip right here I got on um, by this humble brother, Zeke Weatherford, um, bringing out information, you know white dude who's bringing out the truth about the children of Israel, you know, so we need that in these days, but uh, it's, it's, it's called the Aztec and the Mayan spoke Hebrew, now there's one thing I want to get out of here, and it's right here, uh, I'm going to see if it's going to play, see how it does. Hebrew language. Here is the Toltec. Uh, the Toltec word. Uh, you see Aslan down there. I'll tell you what it's by. The computer that can slow y'all, but bear with me. It's not really, I, I, I can really pause it and show you this. Um. Mississippi. Now this one hit song I'm from. Now this one hit song because that's where I'm from. So we're talking about Mississippi. It's going to give you Hebrew and uh, Hebrew and Mayan or Aztec uh, correlation, uh, linguistic correlation. Hebrew word. Uh, it Look at it. If you can word. see it, Masa. 
Shaba, Masa Shaba, or Masa Shabi. Let me see if we can get the brother. Masa Shabi, which means Masa Shabi. Anyway, you can see it, real man. Satan, Satan working right now. You know he the prince of L. You know what I'm saying? He L waves. They tripping the <laughs> Hey, for real. But okay, bam. Check, check us out. Masa Shaba. That's where the Mississippi word comes from. Um, or the Aztec or Mayan word for the Mississippi comes from Masa Shabi. Now, you know, in the Bible, you know, around the Exodus time, you know, the Levites and, and Masa, you know, how they showed and proved when the children of Israel started doubting the Most High at Masa. But I'm not really correlating that. I'm just giving you some, you know what I'm saying? But look what look what the, what it means though in the Hebrew the masa shabi journey masa means journey shabi track passageway flowing along you see what I'm saying so check that out masa shabi journey track passageway flowing along Mississippi at Salon. hmm you know what I'm saying at Salon. now going back to uh. The video about the descent of the mound of the mound building. In that video, um, the the elder is telling you the Choctaw Chickasaw story again, how they stuck the red pole in there, and how they went all the way until the Mississippi. I wanted to get that in there, man, but my computer is acting real slow. You know what I'm saying? So y'all gotta check that out. Please check that out for me. That video, you'll see how they came from there and went. And landed, you know what I'm saying? They took the Red Pole to the Mississippi River. Now, the Mississippi River is in Louisiana. Now, we got the red stick placed in Louisiana. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, still digging. We keep going. All right, you guys. This right here is a site. <laughs> Forgive me for that. Um, I don't know, man. My computer is, is acting too slow. So we're not really gonna touch on this site right here, but this site, as you can see up here, um, hold on, let me get you from out there. Okay, so here, um, this article right here is basically on, um, you see, myths and legends reveal ancient turtle worship linked to the creation of the world. So, um, you have this, you know, this belief or this mytho uh, mythological story by the uh, Native Americans. On that uh, civilization started on the back of a turtle, uh, and that turtle is called North America. You know their place of origin. The, the, um, as you can see, the Native Americans have this story, and the Mayans have this story. So you can dig on that. I would display it, but you you can see how my computer acting. You know what I'm saying? So uh, I don't understand why why it's moving this slow. But yeah, y'all can dig on that. Um, If you if you like so that's just a little correlation basically to the uh, Mayan creation stories or place of origin as well as um as some of the Native American or uh, place of origin now remember when I showed you Cahokia monks mouth what did the dude say he said a lot of people believe that it's it's a it's a turtle effigy the mound is built in the shape of a turtle. You know what I'm saying? That was the great orchestration from what a law, you know what I'm saying, and the ceremonial rituals and, you know, the orders and the commands from the king and the priest came, you know what I'm saying, it's from Monk's Mound. Uh, this mound that looks like a turtle to be in the shape of a turtle. So y'all check that out. So that's just more correlations to the Mayan place of origins uh, as well as Indian, a uh, Native American Indian Aztec place of origin. Okay, to kind of refresh and um, bring your memory back a little bit and kind of to bring this home and wrap it up, um, we're going to check out um, it says the meaning of Aslan. Okay, remember we got place of Huron or place of egrets um, and place of whiteness. Um, but remember I told you in this video we're going to be focusing on two main definitions. That's the place of Huron, the place of egrets, and also, uh, let me see if I can get it for you. Right here, the place of Heron, for the place of Heron and Reeves. Now, what are Reeves? Reeves are the grasses of what? Wetlands, remember? So, we're looking for the place of Heron 
and egrets in a place of reeds. Now the he grow, the the herons and the egrets are gonna be at the uh wetland. You see what I'm saying? They live in the wetland. So uh just wanna get you this little uh article right here. On Google Books, this book called Mississippi Austin Relocate Relocated I seventy and I sixty four connect to St. Louis. Um so now check this out. We'll be reading right up in here. Wetland Eye. Wetland Eye is a two pound whatever wet meadow land located southeast of Eagle Park Road and west of Schoberger, also known as Lounge of Cahokia Canal between the railroad tracks. This wetland is characterized as low ground between the embarkments of Cahokia Canal and the railroad tracks. Um, the proximity of important heron and egret rockeries, check it out. The proximity of important heron and egret rookeries at Allorton and, and the Eagle Park Marsh breeding area makes it likely that the endangered and threatened birds will forage in wetlands within the proposed alliance. Wetland Eye is located approximate to and on but on the opposite west side of the railroad tracks from wetlands in which several Illinois endangered species snowy egret snowy egrets little blue herons black crown and an Illinois threatened species called uh -huh, will exert check this out so in this place you got all three we got the reed lands aka the wetlands and we got you know lands housing the heron and the egrets and a rock is a place with you know what I'm saying a, a, a place of origin of Native American culture it has the red cedar sticks the red cedar post you know what I'm saying it has the wetlands it has uh the herons and the egrets remember let me see if I can go back to it Remember what that say? Atlanta means home of the snowy egrets of whiteness. You know what I'm saying? So, as we seen, you check that out, man. Y'all dig on that? Cahokia wetlands. That's what I'm gonna start searching. And um, and this is some of the stuff I came upon. You know what I'm saying? A Cahokia canal for wetlands, uh, which the Illinois endangered snowy egret, little blue heron. You know what I'm saying? I mean, this it's all up. It's all up in here. And not only that. Cahokia, um, let me see if this site right here is going to pull up. You know, it's probably because I had all these tabs up for so long, you know, for the last couple of days, man, I should probably, I should probably, like, X them out, shut my computer off, let it rest a little bit, but you know what I'm saying, I was just, I was really on the move. So right here is an article, um, about Cahokia, this was published, uh, July 6th, 2016. It says Cahokia Mounds wins recognition for wetland exhibit. So Cahokia has just received this award and this recognition for a museum that they just built. And the museum is called Wetlands and Waterways. Key the key to Cahokia. And it opens in August. Um, which has already passed. So Wetlands and Waterways, Reed Lands and Waterways, the key to Cahokia open in August. Open in August. So check that out. Um, it's a museum. So then doing some more studying, I found another place that kind of was just, you know, like a little bit more cons uh, confirmation um, right here in Wisconsin. This mound site is actually called Atstalan. Atstalan. You know what I'm saying? So uh, so check on, check on that. Dig on that if you can. It's another mound civilization. Um, it's called Atsalan. See, here you got the Cahokia's Monk's Mound here. And this is the mound that's in Atsalan right here. You know what I'm saying? So check that out. Let me see if this, this right here pull up. Remember? Place of Heron and Egrets. So this was uh, possible under the Nahuatl morphology. Place of Egrets would be Azatlan. You know what I'm saying? So, so it's kind of just more confirmation on the area. So I did a little bit more digging. I came upon. Uh, upon this document right here. This is another book 
Uh, it's called Atlan. About sixty dollars at Barnes and Noble. But um, so this is what it says right here. I'm gonna read this right here for you real quick, and I'm gonna get another little piece, and I'm gonna close it out. It says, in central Mexico, the Spanish myth of the golden northern land aroused interest in the legend of the Aztlan. In the legend of Aztlan, the epic, the Edenic place of origin of the Mexica, the Aztecs. Aztlan means either land of the herons or land of whiteness. So we're getting that again. I'm going to scroll down a little bit. Okay, so this further down in the document in the book, Aztlan, we have this right here. And it says, um, let me see. Okay, in 1530, about 400 miles northwest of Mexico City, the conquistador Nuno de Guzman encountered a place called Aztlan, whose name and environment resembled those of the legendary Aztlan. Though the evidence indicates, and still indicates, so let me read that again, though the evidence indicated, and still indicates that Aztlan and Aztlan were one and the same place. It must have seemed too mundane a location for a land that has been ideal, idealized to the point of a paradise on earth. So, um, so this explorer here, when he came across the city, um, he didn't really want to say that this was the biblical, um, Aztlan, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm not, excuse me, let, let me not say biblical, but the the Maya, the Mayan or Aztec Aztlan because it was too mundane for him, you know what I'm saying? So he went on looking for other places. But uh, as we see, you know, these regions right here, these Cahokia Mounds, this Mound, Mississippi, and Mound culture seems to be um, a predecessor to Mayan or and other certain Native American um, culture. Okay, so here. See if I can pull up this picture. Okay, see, see the Mississippi River. See this region right here, this whole region, stretching all the way up into Canada, even more so up in you know Canada up in here too. Um, but this region right here is the Mississippi and uh, Mound culture, and the, where the mounds are at. Right here, then you have Baton Rouge around this area. You know what I'm saying? The red stick where the Choctaw came after coming from Cahokia, which is right here, which was like the capital city, really, of all of these other ones. You know what I'm saying? You got the Etowah Mounds in Georgia as well. Check those out. Fort Ancient up here. You, but uh, the Cahokia Mounds um, was like, really like the capital, you know what I'm saying? But as you can see, other pictures right here of the Earth Mound Pyramid. So you got... um. Those people migrating out of Cahokia and these mound civilizations coming around this area and further south, um, placing their stick here, living there, other tribes going west, east, or whatever. Mayans eventually, you know what I'm saying, crossing the Gulf. These people who became to be Maya eventually crossed the Gulf and then and settled into this land, into, into the Yucatan. Aztecs probably came around. Settle, you know, right here in um, Tenochtitlan and Tehuti, uh, I mean, what is it called? Yeah, Tenochtitlan and Tehuti Huacan, around that area. You know what I'm saying? Remember, man, these are the, we, we talk about the northern kingdom of Israel, composed of ten tribes. You know what I'm saying? So we're not just talking about, you know, they want to separate the Mayans and Aztecs almost like, as if they're two different groups. Which they kind of are, but remember, you know, you got 12 different tribes that come from one person, Jacob. You know, and they all got their own different type of feng shui and culture, you know what I'm saying? So, just take that in, pers uh, in perspective as well. But you got these northern kingdom Israelites that came from these regions right here into their promised hills and valleys. Guatemala, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, as, uh, as we look, you got the place of the reeds, um, place of egress, place of heron, um, place of reeds again. 
place of reeds, you know what I'm saying? You got the wetlands, you got your uh, herons, your rockies, your snowy egrets, you know what I'm saying? Your blue herons, your black crown uh, night herons, all in this area of these Cahokia Mounds. And, um, as well as Zotto Land over there in Wisconsin. So, man, yeah, man, to conclude, you know, could the Mound, Mississippi and Mound culture, um, that area, could that be the possible at, at land of the Aztec and Mayan? And, um, and how this correlates to the second part in the title. And we're going to get to that in the second video. So with that, man, I think I'm going to leave y'all, you know what I'm saying, with that right there so y'all can dig on that. And I give all praise and thanks, man, to the Most High for this information for y'all bearing with me. Even though it didn't go like I wanted to, you know what I'm saying, I wanted to get them video clips in there. You know, but y'all got, but maybe the Most High just wants y'all to dig on it, you know what I'm saying, so... Maybe y'all gotta go check them out for yourself. You know what I'm saying? Go get go get the information, man. Watch those videos for me, please. You know what I'm saying? And pay attention to, to to what they're saying in them videos, you know? So with that, peace and blessings. May the most high be with y'all. Stay safe up. Stay prayed up, you know what I'm saying? Keep those law, statutes, and commandments. Until the next time, until the next episode.